Now we're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation or the electromagnetic spectrum or what we commonly refer to as uh, light waves, gamma rays, radio waves, different kinds of waves. These are all transverse waves. Actually, electromagnetic radiation is a combination of an electro electronic wave and a magnetic wave at the same time. That's why it's called electromagnetic radiation. Uh, let's review quickly uh, the wave terminology we've already discussed. Wavelength, um, distance between two points on the wave. The amplitude is the distance from the undisturbed state or the baseline to the trough or trough or the crest. That is essentially also the amount of energy that's in the wave. The wave period how long it takes for one full wave to happen, and the frequency, the number of waves that pass in a given amount of time, generally a second. Remember, frequency and wavelength are, frequency and wavelength are in an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other must go down. We talked about waves that are either longitudinal, compression, or transverse. Um, sound waves are longitudinal or compression waves, but the electromagnetic waves in the electromagnetic spectrum are all transverse waves. Remembering that transverse waves, the particles vibrate up and down as the energy travels side to side, meaning once again that the vibration of the particles is perpendicular to the direction of the wave. So electromagnetic waves. Uh, they are produced by, once again, the movement of electrically charged particles. Um, they are the waves that can travel in a vacuum, like the sun's electromagnetic waves reach the earth through the vacuum of space. They travel without a medium. We call the speed at which they travel the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. Uh, we also call them EM waves, obviously electromagnetic EM waves. It's kind of a complex concept we call the wave particle duality. Duality meaning something that is two things at once. Okay, light and electromagnetic waves behave like a wave, but they can also act like a particle um, because of different characteristics that light has. Um, we call a particle of light, we call that a photon. And these particles, these photons of light, they travel in streams. And as they travel in streams, they act like a wave. Photons essentially a, uh, it's almost like saying a particle of energy. It's bringing together the concepts of matter and energy at the same time. Uh, but we will not go very deep into this concept just to know that uh, light behaves like a wave and a particle, but we will discuss light as it behaves as a wave. So here is that electromagnetic spectrum. This is the entire electromagnetic spectrum. You can see this transverse wave at the bottom that shows us the low frequency, long wavelength, electromagnetic energy is on the left side of the spectrum, and the high frequency, short wavelength, uh, electromagnetic waves are on the right side of the spectrum. Uh, we have our low energy, low frequency, low energy, high frequency, high energy. That is the way electromagnetic waves work. Radio waves having the lowest frequency and the lowest energy. Gamma rays being very dangerous, having high frequencies and high energy. And this little section right here is the only bit of these electromagnetic waves, the only wavelength that our eyes can see and we call it the visible light spectrum going from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Roy G. Biv. These are the colors of the spectrum that we can see with our eyes. So let's talk about all these different kinds of electromagnetic waves. Radio waves are once again the longest wavelength. Um, this includes both TV signal and radio signal. So radio waves and TV signal radio waves are all around us all the time. Obviously we cannot see them or our vision would be completely cluttered with them all the time. 
but we can send them, we can transmit these electromagnetic signals, and we can receive them. That's how radios and televisions work. We use radio waves for television, radio, uh, avalanche beacons uh, to gauge avalanches on mountains, and heart rate monitors use radio waves to signal uh, to take the information from our heart rate monitor to maybe a heart rate watch or another machine. So we transmit a lot of signals with radio waves because they're not dangerous to us so we can transmit those signals and feel safe. Also cell phone communication is a radio wave. So cell phones operate on electromagnetic radiation that do not require medium which means cell phone signals would travel through space. Uh, microwaves. This is a little bit higher frequency, so it's going to have a little bit more power than a radio wave. Um, microwaves specifically, as the, they are used in microwave ovens, the way microwave ovens work is that these high frequency waves pass through the food and they're causing the particles, specifically the particles of water in the food, to vibrate, and that is the cooking of the food. That is how that happens. Causes a little bit of energy in that food, causing it to cook. Uh, Bluetooth headsets, as you can see here, these use microwave transmissions, which means they're on a different frequency than radio and television signals, uh, which is why they do not interrupt each other. Because it's a little bit different frequency, a little higher frequency than radio waves. Moving on to infrared radiation. Okay, these are, if we could see heat, it would be uh, infrared radiation. Obviously, you would use that for night vision goggles, so you can see the body heat of someone. If you've ever seen the Predator movies, that is how the alien predator in these movies could see the humans, because you could see an infrared radiation. We can also use this for remote controls. Uh, we call these IR remote controls, and that is how that signal is transmitted through infrared radiation. Towards the red end of the color spectrum, it's just before we get to the visible light spectrum, which begins with red. So the visible light spectrum, this is what we can see, okay, traveling from red all the way once again to violet. This is what we can see. These are the wavelengths of light that we can detect with our eye. If our eye could detect the entire electromagnetic spectrum, we would see radio waves, we would see microwaves, we would see all these different things, but we don't because of the, our eyes can only pick up the wavelength of light from red to violet that we see. Uh, dogs, other animals, they can often see different wavelengths of light than we do because their eyes are slightly different. Uh, once again, low frequency, as we're moving from left to right on the entire electromagnetic spectrum, we are moving from low frequency to high frequencies. So as we go from left to right on the visible light spectrum, it follows the same pattern from low frequency, longer wavelengths, to high frequency, short wavelengths. Red, of course, being the lowest wavelength, excuse me, the lowest frequency. Violet, of course, being the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength of visible light. Moving on to more powerful electromagnetic radiation, ultraviolet. We know that we put on sunscreen to block ourselves from this ultraviolet radiation because the sun emits the entire spectrum of electromagnetic radiation. All those things travel to Earth through that empty space because transverse waves do not need that medium. And these ultraviolet rays are dangerous to our skin. They can help us to develop cancers if we are not careful to protect ourselves from those by using sunscreens. Um, in our atmosphere, you've probably heard of the ozone layer. Hopefully you studied that in previous science classes. And that is a part of our atmosphere that blocks out many UV rays, uh, protecting us from essentially uh, developing lots of skin cancer. We use ultraviolet radiation in black lights. Um, ultraviolet radiation is strong enough to kill a lot of bacteria, so we can sterilize things, our medical equipment and other equipment with that. We can also kill bacteria in water. Um, and you can see security images on a lot of things because they, some images might only appear under those black light conditions. 
So it's fairly useful, but it can be dangerous in large doses. Moving on to even more powerful electromagnetic radiation, X-rays. Once again, as the wavelength gets smaller, the frequency is higher, it's more powerful. Obviously, X-rays can travel through our bodies. Um, this is how we see our bones in X-rays. And this is how we scan things at airports, right? So it's, they're so strong, they pass through a lot of matter. They don't pass through all forms of matter. Obviously, don't, they don't pass easily through our dense bones, but they do pass through more easily through our less dense skin. So x-rays, very powerful. Too much exposure to x-rays, very dangerous. And gamma rays, the most powerful, very dangerous. Lots of power, lots of energy is transmitted with these waves. They can damage our skin and other cells greatly. So we don't want to be responsible for any kind of uh, exposure to gamma radiation. It's very bad for you. Uh, it kills almost everything that might be poisonous to our food. So we can use that to, to, you know, kill bacteria in food. It is what is responsible for certain cancer treatments. Focused gamma radiation on cancer cells kills them. Very powerful part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Fortunately, most gamma rays blocked out through our atmosphere, so we are able to live here on planet Earth. So let's talk about what these electromagnetic radiation waves can pass through and what they cannot pass through. We talk about objects, especially when referring to light waves, because that's what we can see. We refer, we refer to objects as to whether they can allow electromagnetic radiation, specifically light waves, to pass through them or not. So if a light wave can travel through an object, it's called transparent. Obviously things like windows, uh, those are transparent. If some light is blocked, um, and a dark shadow is cast by that object, then we call those objects opaque objects. Uh, and if a little bit of light passes through, but not all, then there's a little bit of a shadow. We call these objects translucent. So transparent, all the light travels through it. Translucent, some of the light travels through it. And most of the light is blocked in an opaque object. And we can talk about how light waves uh, act when they come into contact with certain objects. We talk about obviously reflection. Okay, when a light wave strikes an object and it bounces off, this is called reflection. So here's the light wave, bounces off. Light wave bounces off, that is reflection. Here is a smooth type of reflection, reflection on a smooth surface, uh, often called regular reflection. And here is what is called diffuse reflection when it's a rough surface. Clearly you see here the light waves come in, they bounce off, and they are all very clean. Here when it's diffuse, when there's a rough surface, they go in multiple ways uh, so you don't get those perfect rays coming back off. Uh, we call the law of refraction uh, the angle of incidence, meaning the angle that the light wave comes in on a smooth surface will be the same thing as it comes out on a smooth surface. And we can talk about refraction, which is another thing that happens to light waves when they uh, travel from one medium to another, remembering that they don't need a medium in order to travel. So when they do reach a medium, it changes their speed. The more dense the medium, the slower the speed. So refraction is the way those waves bend, those light waves bend, when they change from one medium to another. Um, a slower, when we slow down that light wave by going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium, such as from the air, maybe into water, then it would, it's going to slow that wave down, it's going to bend inward, it's going to bend inward. Whereas if we go uh, from a more dense medium to a less dense medium, so maybe from water into air, then it's going to speed up because the less dense the medium, the faster it goes, it's going to speed up and it will bend outward. So that is the refraction, that is what can happen to light when it changes mediums. Light can change medium, it either goes slower, going from a less dense medium to a more dense medium, or it can speed up going from a more dense medium to a less dense medium.